The match day the bunts are the same. The adults are more of a match day the bunts and the big ones. Yes, when we're looking over these, like Anna, there's a better line ah, yes. over the back. This one yes. to yes. see, like crouching down, yes. not standing this way in. This yes. one. Yeah. 
obviously she's suffering with a tail. Well, I would them purely yeah. because they are marked. They're marked properly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I wouldn't yeah. argue with that because I think they're Green a few birds and they are coloured. Green one. one. Thank you. 
Webster from the Zebra Finch Society. Yeah. How was the show gone? Actually, the show has gone remarkably well. Uh, we've had a, a we have a, this same show every year, uh, and this year has been better, I think, than it has been since the beginning of the COVID epidemic. And uh, there's a how long has the show been? The society been well. Running? The society was formed in 1952, uh, and well, I think we've probably had a show every year since then. The quality of the birds has probably been the best for a few years, but it's very difficult from one year to the next since the, it is an annual show. Um, now, in addition to this show, we do have area shows around the country, uh, which are, in context, is about the same, but the, obviously we get more birds of this because it is the main show. So we have three judges this year uh, and they had quite a difficult job in deciding uh, the order of the birds on the on display uh, but they've done a good job and you can see the results in in front of you actually because there is a, a whole line of the best birds. We can actually see them. Yeah uh, so you know you can you can get an idea of what we're all aiming for. Now, not everybody can have the same level of success, of course, uh -huh. uh, but um, there's one fancier in particular, um, Peter Harrison, who's done very well this year. Uh, and again, not entirely unusual, because he's done very well on some other years too. Uh, but, uh, but there we are. Um, 
Yeah, and, and we all come. And it's, it's in part, it's a social occasion, of course, uh, because there are some people here uh, that I haven't seen since last year, because uh, there are people from Wales, there are people from the south west of England. Uh, one of the judges came down from Scotland, for example, and and so yes, it's very successful. It's very successful, and you know, that, that, we had a Welsh judge this year, a Scottish judge and somebody from the southwest, as it, as it turns out. But every year we pick a different set of judges. You know, people, when they go onto the judges panel, they have to apply to do that. And when people go off onto the judges panel, they know they, have an op they will have an opportunity sooner or later to be part of this show as a judge. Um, and, uh, and that's an important thing for them uh, and also for the fancy. Because the more different judges, if you like, that, that, that are available, uh, it, it makes it more interesting for the exhibitor. Uh, I've been in the Zebra Finch Society for, let's say, uh, 51 years. And over that oh, time, yeah, over that time, they certainly have changed. They've uh, got, I don't want to get into the technical details, but one of the things that, that has changed is the type of feather on the bird. So there are so-called yellow, not yellow literally, but yellow feathered birds, uh, which are tighter. Uh, and, and then there are buff uh, feathered birds, which, which tend to be a bit looser. So that makes the bird, being looser, makes the bird look bigger. Right. Uh, so, so that's one thing that has definitely changed. I think the other thing is that there have been uh, the zebra finch is well known for um, producing mutations periodically, which is to say a different colour form. And so, uh, so these have been developed. So originally it was just the grey coloured birds, uh, and then fawn coloured, and then since then there have been various other mutations, which is why you get the different colours that you've seen in the show today. Um, now, more recently, in the last 25 years or so, uh, some of the mutations that have arisen on the continent have been quite popular, and people are trying to develop these into show birds too. And there are one or two uh, on display today. Not a lot, but there are, there are some. Uh, and so, you know, you look forward to seeing these because Again, personal opinion, some you will like and some you will not. Uh, it's purely, purely preference. Preference. Yes, that's right, it's purely preference. Oh, what's that? The bird got out. Yeah. Peter Harrison just um, caught it very quickly and it was back. Did, what an introduction. Did, did you catch that on camera? I think we did. Yeah, just <laughs> Peter Harrison it, just... Um, make a good wicket keeper. I've got thousands of them in me, Sam. Hundreds of thousands. Pleased to meet you anyway. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Especially you being with that accent from Humberside. Yeah, he keeps, he keeps yeah. saying about the. Uh, it's much from early on, we've not met before. He yeah, said, but yeah, you you'll not want to meet me again. <laughs> <laughs> Are you from Hull? Oh, Hull. Yeah. Hull. Yeah. So, how, how's the show gone? Yeah, it's gone well today, yeah. It's gone well, but it's been my first sort of venture out this year, so. You know, I suppose. Uh, First one, yeah, first one this year because I don't do that many shows, you know, so it's, it's always nice to... I suppose you have an advantage because your birds are fresher maybe than other people's as well. You know, but, uh, yeah. yeah, it's gone well today. Yeah. Zepherfinch, why, why Zepherfinch? Or is it just a bird? I, I had them from, from being a kid, you know, 10 years old. Um, basically there was a, a craze at the primary schools. And I got some zebra finches and a few other sorts of birds and, and liked the zebra finches and, and went into sort of showing up locally. A couple of, you know, fellas who showed them sort of on a, on a national basis who, who transported me birds around for me and, and then I met a, a lovely family from Manchester who, who took them all over the place for me, um, the Taylors. 
and uh, got bitten by the bug from sort of 12, 13, something like that, and I've been stuck with it ever since, to be honest. You've been doing it a long time then? Yeah, it's coming up for 50 years, believe it or 50 not. 50 yeah. years? Yeah, yeah. I know we only look 35, but, uh, you know. <laughs> What, what, did I say 35? What I meant was 65. What, what bears did you show today? What, what? Uh, well, Somebody all, mentioned a black sheep. No, they're all, yeah, black, there's some black sheep. I always like the black sheep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're a little bit newer. Can I have some off you? <laughs> yeah, if you, if, you, if you can make your way over from Humberside, you know, to, to the other side of the country. To Scouse Land, as you call it. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Just, uh, Funny enough, I am actually going just, up there. You don't leave your car in any side streets, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> so you got black cheeks? Yeah, I mean, I've got a range of colours here today. Um, but the, the colours tend to fluctuate from year to year. So, so sometimes you'll have a number of a certain colour, and then three years down the line, you haven't got any of that particular colour, but you've got something else. That's, I guess that's the beauty of a range of mutations that Zebra Finches, you know, historically have provided. What, what's your favourite mutation? Oh, you good got ones. One. Good ones. Yeah, what's anything what? with a good shape. Well, Is that called type? Type, yeah. Type, yeah. Type yeah. I don't really have a favourite um, mutation. No, good, good ones. The only ones I've not really had is pipes. And that's because it's a little bit random, the markings. So you could breed, you know, you could breed the best pair of birds you've ever bred. But if the markings aren't right, they wouldn't be successful. So that's not really, I think you've got to be a bit sadistic to, to go into pies and breed a lot of that particular mutation. Yeah, the, the tricky to... Yeah, yeah, right. you know, so yeah, I've had most of the mutations over my tenure, as they say. Um, you got an outside aviary? No, no, can... no outside aviary. Oh, it's all inside? All inside, yeah, yeah. I mean, these days with, with you know, bird flu, Falcons, cats, you name it. I, I've never really had outside aviaries, you know, drop-ins off wild birds. Sparrow hawks. Sparrow hawks, yeah, all that kind of thing. Hey, actually, I, I've got an outside aviary and I think sparrow hawks diving at the window. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, no, I, I mean, these things are, are, are sort of stressful enough without added complications, you know, so, yeah, all mine are inside and I've been for, well, 40 odd years, you know, no outside, yeah. What's your secret to winning a winning bird? Um, Good sight. Should, yeah, I mean, should it stand off the perch or not, can it sit? It's not a secret. Um, there's no secrets, you know. Um, you seem to win a lot. People might, I mean, I've, I, I, I have done well over, over the years that I've had them, but like anything in life, you know, there's ups and downs with it and mm. it doesn't always sort of go positive sometimes you have bad bad runs sometimes you have bad years that's you know that's that's living with livestock i'm afraid you know but yeah they've done well over the over the time i've had them yeah you know but i've been lucky because i i, I was kind of involved in it uh, from a young age and involved in it when when birds were sort of um, you know more plentiful and, and people up and down the country you know there was lots of people did this thing Sadly, you know, in, in recent years, it, it's it's declined, you know, with people showing the birds. People have seem to be saying that. Yeah, and that, I think that goes for other breeds, you know, canaries, budgerigars, racing pigeons, you know, I think it's just a trend of, of life, basically. You know, people aren't, aren't, haven't got that sort of commitment, you know, working long hours, holidays abroad, playing golf. You know, when I when I was young, you, you had to be wealthy to play golf. You know, in a golf club. But now, you know, all these things are sort of mm. available to people. So, yeah. I'm just um, I don't know. I've got a curse on me that keeps me doing this thing. You know, um, it, it kind of gets in your blood. Sir, I just like to sit, sit around the bed and the sound of them. And yeah, it's just yeah, yeah. And I'm not yeah. a yeah, I've always, I've always sort of, you know, liked a challenge. I think that's the key to it, you know. And, and Only a challenge, that was people would say, I know they are. Well, I mean, it's... Uh, they like... Oh, but they don't, you see. That's a misconception. Yeah. That's what um, you know, you can go in, go and get birds from, from, from a pet shop or, you know, poorer quality birds. And yeah, they will breed like mice, but so will canaries. So will budgie the guys. Yeah. I think as you get to the, the, the better quality ones, yeah. you know, which have more sort of features on them, 
um, like anything, you know, good things don't come in large um, flocks. So, you know, you, you, you're always taking the gains against the sort of negatives, you know, and, and there are plenty of negatives, you know, unfortunately. But uh, when you do get them, I suppose it makes it more worthwhile. So that's been my sort of philosophy with it, you know. You, you've got to stick at things as well. You know, a lot, lots of people today they won't they won't stick at things. You know, they hit a bump in the road and that's them gone. You know, so yeah, that's been the thing. I mean, I, I, I did sort of which which has been you know said before, but I, you know, my, my late father was a, a successful racing pigeon enthusiast. So from a young age, I, I did have you know quite a bit of. Um, not health, but I had knowledge to fall back on, which, which you know, I, I'm sure I wouldn't have. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, livestock, whether it be a pigeon, a parrot, you know, I suppose even a dog or a horse, the, the husbandry around them um, is very similar in lots of ways, you know. So I was, I was lucky that from a young age I got told that you might as well have good ones as bad ones. And, and you know the time you spend with them is the most valuable thing. You haven't got time to waste, so you know get some of the the best you can afford. And that was probably the best advice I ever had because you know you you were up immediately looking to, to to improve. You know rather than dawdling about thinking, oh, well these are good enough and I've got the best ones. And you know you 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 automatically were striving to get better birds. So. Is there a lot of competition? I suppose there is. Is there competition so um, in breeding or? Um, I mean, competition is is a funny sort of thing because you know I, I can remember going to shows like this in the 90s and we'd have you know 730 pairs of, of zebra finches, you know. But maybe that's for other people to, to decide. Maybe the standard of the birds 20, 30 years ago wasn't as high as today's. So you know, as I said good things or exceptional things don't come in large flocks so you know what you see possibly today even the ones that are middle of the road would probably have walked a show 30 years ago you know some people you know would argue that's progress but I suppose if, if you if you see it from from um, you know somebody that that, that, that has lived on, on quality you know, I'd rather I'd rather have sort of a hundred pairs that were exceptional than a thousand pairs with ten pairs that are, are, are you know good ones. So I guess that is progress. Makes sense. Makes sense. I don't make much sense, but <laughs> in general, you know, he's ever finch. Um, yeah. yeah, but you know, even 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 experienced people, as I say, a phrase that. that you know, a, a wise man told me, and that was my father, he said, you know, I've, I've met lots of pigeon races. When they're doing well, they're experts, and they brag on Facebook or whatever they do. But when they don't do so well, um, they're not experts, and nobody knows what to do when it's not going well. And I, I've found that out loads of times. You know, you, you can win shows like here today, but if you have a, a bad run, you know, nobody knows what to do. I don't care how long you've had them or what success you've had, and that's that's a fact. Nobody knows what to do. So, you know, I think I think the self-professed experts um, should should be very wary of you know uh, <laughs> boasting too much. That's what I would say. But you know, each to their own. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Not you too. <laughs>